Okay, so in this final brief video, I'm going to discuss relative clauses. So a relative clause is a clause that is like who is tall or which Bob does too. So it's a clause, so it's kind of like a sentence, but it has that pronoun in there, the who or the which, which is picking up its reference from the broader sentence in which the clause occurs, and therefore its reference is relative to another part of the sentence. So Jack, who is tall, runs. Jill, who is tall, jumps. Well, in the first case, the who refers to Jack. In the second case, the who refers to Jill. And so it, and it's relative. And when we say Jack runs, which Bob does too, Jill jumps, which Bob does too. So in all these different cases, the who or the which gets its reference from what it's related to what it's relative to. So what, how do we symbolize one of these then? There's no, uh, we can symbolize a sentence with a relative clause in it, but it's not obvious how because there's no explicit logical vocabulary. Well, Jack, who is tall, runs, tells us two things. It tells us Jack runs. It also tells us that Jack is tall. In other words, it's equivalent to Jack runs and Jack is tall because it's telling us two things. So we can symbolize it as a conjunction. The relative, so the relative clause tells us a further thing, right, beyond whatever the main clause does. So two pieces of information. And so such a sentence is true if and only if what? Well, both the main and relative clauses are true. And so it's a conjunction. We can symbolize it as a conjunction anyway. This is slightly more complicated. We say if it's Misty, then Jack, who is from Seattle, will be happy. So this is still telling us two things. What it's telling us is, um, let's say we, well actually let's do it this way. So let's say if it, it's Misty will be P, Jack will be happy is Q, and Jack is from Seattle is R. So how do we symbolize this? You might take a minute, pause this, and take just, you know, 30 seconds to write it down. The question is, where's the relative clause going to go? You could symbolize it as, P and R, so if it's Misty and Jack is from Seattle, then Jack will be happy. Or you could symbolize it if P then Q and R, so it's a conjunction. And indeed, uh, this is the one we want. Sorry, that you could... It, it, who knows where you put the who is from Seattle? Well, I'll tell you where you put it as a second conjunction, and then the rest of the sentence is the other conjunct. Because a sentence is telling us two things. It's telling us that Jack indeed is from Seattle, and um, if it's Misty, then he'll be happy. So it's not saying if it's Misty, then Jack is from Seattle, and he's happy, or he will be happy. It's saying he is from Seattle, and if it's Misty, then he'll be happy. So... Wherever the relative clause is, it still pulls out, at least the ones we'll be looking at, and is a conjunct to the rest, uh, is, is one conjunct, and the rest of the sentence is symbolized as the other conjunct. So that's how we handle relative clauses. So that's it for this week in terms of new content. Um, if you have questions about any of the homework, do let me know, or any of this new material. I'll have office hours on Thursday from 8 to 9 as regular, and then also, but for the next unit, on Sunday from 8 to 9.